Okay, here we go. So 6.7, graphing linear inequalities, right? Graphing linear inequalities. All right, here's the difference. Now, we've graphed lines, but to graph a linear inequality, the solution to an inequality is not a single point or a bunch of points along a line. It's an infinite set of points, not only on the line, but on one, of, not only possibly on the line, let me say it that way, but all the points on a side of the line. So what's represented here is we have a dotted line and we have all this area shaded. And here's what we're saying. This shaded area is the solution. Every point in the shaded area is the solution to the inequality. And there's an infinite number of points. There are an infinite number of solutions to that inequality. And so it's all those points. So whenever you're asked to graph an inequality, you've got to remember, I've got to shade one of the sides of the line. Yesterday in Algebra 2, we didn't do lines, we did what are called parabolas, they're quadratics. And we did inequalities, quadratic inequalities, and guess what, we had a shade as well. One side of the parabola or the other side of the parabola, just like the concept here, one side of the line or the other side of the line. Now, we already know how to graph the line. We already know how to do that. So all we have to do is make sure we care for the fact that it's an inequality. So. Here's it in a nutshell in the box. These are graphed just like we graph linear functions. You're going to do y equals mx plus b. There's no change there, except a few things. All right. If the original inequality symbol is a less than, or it's a greater than, the points of the line are not part of the solution because watch guys the line is the equal part if we did an equation we had an equal sign didn't we didn't we draw a line to represent all the points of the equal equation well if you have a less than is that no less than or if you have a greater than then the equal parts aren't part of the solution. And we show that by a dotted line. So this example is an example of either a less than or a greater than because the line is dotted. Because guess what? The points of that line are not part of the solution. The points are the equal to part. For example, if you subbed in the, the, the points, you're going to get like 7 equals 7. But if it were an inequality, is 7 less than 7? Is that true? False. Is 7 greater than 7? Is that true? False. See, the equal part isn't true. It's not part of the solution. So whenever it's a less than or greater than, we use a dotted line, not a solid line. However, we'll uh, therefore use a dotted line. Okay. So less than or greater than the points are not part of the solution. And to illustrate that, we're going to use a dotted line. Dotted line says points aren't a part. However, if you got the line underneath, then the equal to part is 7 greater than or equal to 7. Yes. Is 7 less than or equal to 7? Yes. Now, if you have the equal to part, the points of the line are part of the solution. Therefore, we use a solid line. Now, our example is not of an equal to. It's of a less than or a greater than. So that's one thing you got to remember to do. Do I use a dotted line or do I use a solid line? And quite honestly, it's pretty easy. If there's a line under the symbol, use a solid line. If there's no line under the symbol, use a dotted line. Because, again, the reason... The points of the line are only included in the equal to part, and therefore only when there's a line underneath. And therefore, a solid line shows that. 
a dotted line that says the points are not included. Well, the other thing you have to do is you have to shade the side of the line that contains the solution. You have to shade the side of the line that contains the solution. Now, there's a technical way to do this. There's an algebraic way to do this. The algebraic way is to find a test point. And if you know the original function, you can figure it out. So stay with me. I'm going to write the equation of this inequality, all right? It's y. I happen to know it's a less than. You'll see that in a little bit. Now, I still need the slope. Can anybody tell me the slope of that line? Say it if you know it. 2, so 2x. Two anybody tell me the y-intercept? Plus 1. All right, that's the inequality that represents represented by that function. That's Well, it's not even a function. That's the inequality, all right? can't even say equation because it's not an equation, all right? That's the inequality. Now, a test point would be, take a point on one of the sides of the line. I'm going to take this point. And this point is the point to 0. And I can put in its coordinates, put in the 0 for the y, put in the 2 for the x, and see if I get a true statement. Is 0 less than 5? Is that true? That's true. Any point on the true side means all the points on the true side are true. Now, that's the technical way to figure out what's, what side to shade. There's a lot easier way. Way easier way. So that's the technical way, test point. Now, by the way, don't do this. I could choose a point over here. What point is that? Negative 2, 2. Put in 2 for the y, put in negative 2 for the x. Negative 2 is less than negative 3. False, right? See, every point on the other side is false. Every point on the left side of the line is false. Every point on the right side of the line is true, though. Every single one. So test points, but there's an easier way. So let's do the easier way. So talking about shading, number one. If less than or less than or equal to shade, are you ready? Below the line. Doesn't that even make sense? Doesn't that make sense? What is... What is the variable to the left of the inequality symbol? It's a y. Is y the horizontals or the verticals? Verticals. If you want to go less on the y, which way do you go? Down. I mean, it makes perfect sense. The shading is... Up or down. If you got a less than or you got a less than or equal to, you're going to shade below. So, this first example is of a less than. How did I know it's not a less than or equal to? Because it's dotted, right? And if I were going to shade, hey, I don't know about you, but below is pretty simply like right there, below. I mean, I would think I could get a a first grader to figure out below. Do the first graders know above and below? I think they do. Okay. Just below. The second example is what? A less than or less than or equal to? Less than. And can you figure out below on that one? Well, below is that side, right? On that one? Now our third example must be a less than or equal to because it's a solid line and doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that below is right there, right? Is that all doable? That's pretty simplistic. And look, if it's greater than or greater than or equal to, we're going to shade above the line. Now, 
again, you can do test points if you want. Knock yourself out. But it's pretty easy known above and below. So our first example, being we're doing either greater than or greater than or equal to, must be a greater than because of the dotted line. So where would you shade? Above the line. That's pretty simplistic. Second example, again, is a greater than. And look, the steeper the line gets, it gets, you know, a little bit more challenging. But but doesn't everybody know that above is on this side, right? I mean, isn't that quite obvious that that's the above side? And, of course, the last example is a greater than or equal to. And above the line is right there. So look, if we know how to graph linear functions, y equals mx plus b, then we can do an inequality. We just have to remember, will my line be solid or dotted? And i got to remember to shade one side of the line. If I do that, voila, I'm there. All right, so let me get my shade here. So let's do a couple examples. Because, again, we pretty much know how to do this. Okay, don't forget, when you're graphing something linear, we want it in y equals mx plus b form so that we could read the slope and the y-intercept. So on three, I want you guys to tell me the value of the slope. And here we go. One, two, three. Four thirds. Four thirds, okay? And then on three, I want you to give me the value of the B. All right, here we go. Uno, dos, tres. Negative two. Negative two. All right, now I need somebody to raise your hand and tell me how to get the first point on our graph. Connor? And tell me how to tell me what to do. Okay, you do want to do, remember folks, we're going to do our y-intercept first. Somebody tell me how to get the second point. Second point. Ashton, go ahead. Okay, so like this, Ashton, everybody watch, don't do anything yet. So I go up four and to the right three like that wow. you don't want me to do that what do you want me to do Up from the two. yeah remember you always go from the y-intercept good so one two three four one two three puts me right there and how did ashton know to go up he looked at the top number of the slope it's always up or down positive is up negative is down he looked at the bottom number positive is right negative is left we've done this before therefore i go up four and to the right three from my y-intercept. Okay, somebody raise your hand and tell me what to do next. What's next? Nick? Uh, write a dotted line. I need a dotted line. Nick said, oops, I want that to be red. Nick said dotted line because there's no equal to part. Guys, every point on that line is the equal to part and it's not part of our solution because again example seven's not greater than seven and seven's not less than seven so whatever the number would be doesn't matter it's not going to be less than or greater than itself okay i'm almost done but whenever you get an inequality you're thinking hey not only do i have to remember solid or dotted line i got to remember <coughs> Shading. So, somebody raise your hand and tell me where to shade this thing. Where do I shade? Kirsten? Where's below? Let's go right or left of the line. Okay, so below, hopefully you agree, is there, right? Now again, you can do test point if you want. And just so you're, you know... Kirsten looked at the less than, 
and that's why she said below, right? A less than is a below. Nick also looked at the less than and said that's a dotted line. So the symbol tells you dotted or solid, and the symbol tells you what side the shade. Symbol tells you dotted or solid, and the symbol tells you what side the shade. So remember, how do we graph lines? We figure out the slope and the y-intercept. We graph the y-intercept first. From the y-intercept, use your slope. Go up four, one, two, three, four. Go to the right three, one, two, three. Put your second point, dotted line because of the symbol, shade below because of the symbol. Pretty easy, right? I think you can do that. All right, look at our second example. And I'm going to pause, and I'm going to let you guys figure this one out. So let me pause the video, and you guys... All right, I don't know how far you got, but hopefully you said, hey, I'm going to put it in the slope-intercept form, right? I'm going to move that X. Right. Then I'm going to move that negative 3. Doing the shortcut. And how many of you remember that when you're doing an inequality and you're multiplying or dividing by a negative, you do what? You flip out, right? you got to flip your inequality symbol. So y now ends up greater than or equal to one third x minus two. Why? It is plus two. Thank you. No Kool-Aid for you. That's a negative, right? Man, my board is really non-responsive today. Okay. So hopefully now you're going to graph your y-intercept first. Which let's go ahead and write. Our slope is one third. Our B is 2, right? Let's graph our y-intercept at 2. A positive 1 third. Positive is up. 3 on the bottom is right. I go up 1. I go to the right 3. Put my point. Solid or dotted? Solid. Solid. And I have to shade above the line because it's a greater than, right? Greater than is above, less than is below. Now, again, you crocodile and alligator people, lots of luck. It's an arrowhead. Hopefully, we're good by now. The arrowhead is pointing to the right, which is bigger, which is up. Pointing to the left is smaller, which is negative, which is down. How many got that right? Oh, what? Mathy X. Any questions on that one? Anybody? Any questions? All right. Make sure you flip out when you're supposed to flip out and don't flip out when you're not supposed to flip out. All right, so let's finish up with a couple special cases. Students can tend to struggle with the special cases. Okay, first one is X greater than zero x greater than zero. So the solution to this is any x value that's greater than zero. Don't write this. If I were to graph the line x equals zero, I'd have to graph the line where every point of the line has an x value of zero. Doesn't every point on this line have an x value of zero? See, students don't like that. They, they want an x equals zero to be a horizontal line because the x is the horizontal variable. They fail to understand x equals zero means every coordinate of the x is zero. Now, in this scenario, though, we're doing an inequality. Does the inequality symbol have a line under it, yes or no? So what kind of line am I going to draw? Dotted. Dotted. And I'm, oh, it's supposed to be red. And I'm at zero, so I'm drawing a dotted line at zero. Now, in this case, it's x, so it's a little bit off. Is there an up and down to a vertical line? 
Is there up and down? <laughs> no. There is left or right, though. Which way is the symbol pointing? Right. And which way do you shade? Right. That's the X greater than zero. <laughs> Guided line on the Y axis. And by the way, pick any point in that in the shaded area. Isn't its X value greater than zero? Right? Pick any point. And the X value could be one, one's greater than zero, it could be seven, seven's greater than zero, it could be a million, a million's greater than zero. No matter what X value you pick. No matter what point you pick, the x value is greater than zero. Second example, we're again with x. Now we're less than or equal to zero. Less than or equal to the equal to part says what kind of line? Solid line. Now I got a solid line. Because you know what? The points of the line are included. Is zero less than or equal to zero? It is. And which way do I shade? To the left. Because that's the way the inequality symbols go. And every point that side has x values that are less than 0. The point negative 2, 1. The x is negative 2. Negative 2 is less than 0. The point negative 7, 5 has an x of negative 7. Negative 7 is less than 1, etc., etc. Okay. Whoa, I have A, B, B, B. Did you catch that? All right, first editions. C, sorry about that. I always do copy and paste, and then I got to change things, and sometimes I forget to change stuff. And this one is D. Right? Do you know my alphabet, I think? But then, this is math class, so who cares, right? The English police will be after me later. All right, so on C, now we got to do Y greater than or equal to zero. Now, by the way, the slope... When it's a y equals, we can figure out the slope. What's the slope of a of a y equals? What's the slope of any? All right, so let me pause. Let me try to refresh your memory. If I were to graph y equals 2, don't do this. This would be a horizontal line through the y coordinate of 2. Why? Because every y coordinate of that line has a value of 2. <coughs> Well, we're dealing with zero here. So, first off, is this going to be a solid line or a dotted line? Solid, because it's greater than or equal to. And it is through the origin. Because we need every y value to be zero. Isn't the y value of every point on that line zero? Aren't they? Look. What's the y value of this point? Zero. What's the y value of that 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 point? Zero. Every point along that line has a y value of zero. Now we got to finish with shading. And do I shade above or below? Above, because greater than is above. And of course, the last example is a dotted line. Hopefully, you concur. And hopefully you agree we're going to shade below. Dotted line. And we're shading below. Dotted line. And we're shading below. A couple special cases. All right, so just give me your attempt. Go ahead. Question, Raquel? I thought that the line except for square root square. You thought that the Y intercept was vertical? No, Don't pack up. Go ahead. If I were to graph Raquel, y equals 3. This isn't the y-intercept. This is a line where every y-coordinate is 3. Every y-coordinate, every one of these points is a y-coordinate of 3. When it's a y equals, you get a horizontal line. I can go further. I could write it in slope intercept form if I wanted to. Y equals 0x plus 3. I have a 0 slope of my horizontal line, and every y coordinate is 3. Again, students want to get that mixed up. There's really no other way I can show you but that, and that you have to remember not get it mixed up. There's nothing else I can do to help you there. I can show it to you, but you have to keep from getting it mixed up. Adriana. 
Yeah, because it was X on the left instead of Y. See, that's the difference. Everything else we do is Y equals or Y greater than or Y less than. On these two, it was X. They're special cases. They're vertical lines and shading left to right because of the X. There's no Y at all, just an X. And that's how you recognize it. Okay? All right, so let me just finish up with one quick review. Try to wire your brain. Don't pack up. Listen. So remember, an inequality gives you a whole host of points, even beyond the points along the line. Are the points of the line always included? No. Only when it's an equal to. So less than or greater than dotted line because the points of the line aren't included. Less than or equal to greater than or equal to solid line because the points of the line are included. And then, remember, an in inequality, it's all the points as well on one side of the line. So whenever you're going to do an inequality, you got to think, hey, two things. I see that inequality symbol. i got to think solid or dotted line. And then i got to think shading. Do I shade above? Do I shade below? All the rest we know when we just simply apply. All right, you can get yourself ready. Quiz tomorrow. Quiz tomorrow. Test on Thursday.